Hello everyone, Jim Kim here again, and today we'll be talking about how EKG or electrocardiogram works. Before we get started, I would like to remind everyone that your heart is beating constantly as long as you're alive. Although you cannot feel your own heartbeat, it's doing its own thing and making sure your entire body is receiving enough blood. I like to visualize the heart as some kind of an electrical circuit where each wire passes by and connects to these special cardiac muscle cells that contract and relax when they receive electric inputs from the heart's conduction system, which we'll go over today. And it's EKG machines that allow us to visualize how these electric signals actually travel around the heart and supply electric signals to trigger these heart muscle cells to contract and relax over and over again until your heart stops beating as you exhale your last breath. In order to help you conceptualize the heart, and how EKG machine works, we're going to propose a hypothetical scenario. Let's say you're an ER doctor in House MD or Gray's Anatomy, and a patient presents to the clinic with a sudden heart spasm. But there are different types of heart spasms depending on which component of the heart's conduction system is involved. This is when installing EKG can be tremendously helpful. So let's get started. First, I'll explain what EKG leads are. I like to consider them as some kind of signal releaser and receiver. They are electrodes that basically measure the movement and direction of your heart electrical circuitry. To better visualize it, here is a drawing of where you would find the leads. We're going to begin with the vertical surface leads. And there are leads 1, as being shown right here. There is lead 2 by your left shoulder. And lead 3 pointing towards your left leg, as being shown right here. And these three vertical leads form a triangle that looks something like this. And then this triangle is then used to form the other three vertical leads, also known as AVR, AVL, and AVF. Here I'm showing the AVL, and L stands for lateral. Here I'm showing AVF, and F stands for inferior. And finally, I'm showing AVR, which stands for right. But I'm not sure if the letter R actually stands for right. And now I'm going to highlight your heart with this sphere in green color here and then i'm going to visualize how the electrical signals are measured on ekg strip so let's focus on lead one for now so let's say there is a positive electric signal as being shown as the squiggly line here traveling towards lead one then on the ekg strip you will see that as a positive peak or a positive bump on the other hand, if there is a positive electric signal that is moving away from lead 1, that would appear as a divot or a trough with a negative charge. On the other hand, if there is a negative electric signal that is going away from lead 1, that's a negative charge that is being basically removed away from lead 1, so that shows up as a positive charge, as being shown right here. Now, if this negative electric signal is traveling towards lead 1, then that would appear as a negative or a trough instead of a peak. How about lead 2? How would these signals appear on lead 2? It would actually show up as a flat line. You wouldn't see anything because the signals are traveling perpendicular, 90 degrees from the direction of the lead 2. So you would not see any electric signals measured on the EKG strip if it's perpendicular as shown here. How about for lead 3? It would be a complete opposite of the EKG strips of lead 1 as being shown here because it's on the other side of the heart compared to lead 1. So you would see a completely opposite pattern. So that's basically it for the vertical plane leads. And now we're going to talk about the horizontal plane leads. Now here is a more horizontal view of the body, and the horizontal leads are V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6, and they're usually placed on your chest by your nipples. And again, we're going to designate this green hollow sphere as your heart, and we're going to do the same exact exercise here. What if there is a positive electric signal or a wave of depolarization traveling towards V2 lead? That would appear as a peak a positive peak on V2. How about another positive signal traveling towards V6 lead? Again, a positive peak. 
How about a negative or a repolarization signal traveling towards V1? It's negative, so you would expect a trough instead of a peak on V1 lead. Same exercise here, a negative electric signal traveling towards V4. For this example, then you would see a negative peak or a negative trough. Finally, a negative electric signal that is traveling away from V3 would then appear as a positive peak, as shown here. And that's basically it for the EKG basics. And now we're going to talk about how they relate to your normal sinus rhythm. So here is a standard normal EKG tracing. In the green circle, I'm highlighting the vertical leads, lead 1, 2, 3, AVR, AVL, and AVF. And in the red circle here, I'm highlighting the horizontal leads, V1 through V6 leads. Now in the bottom, it shows V1, lead 2, and lead V5. They're identical as the ones in the top, but they're just extended to show the EKG pattern over a span of 10 seconds. And this is important because it helps us to really measure your heart rate by counting the number of boxes between two peaks. And there are about 3.5 boxes here. So that would translate to roughly 90 to 100 beats per minute heart rate. So that, now that I showed you how to interpret EKG strips, I want to go through each wave, each line that you see on a normal sinus rhythm. And before we get started, I want to highlight all the chambers of the heart. So in the red here is showing the right atrium, and the left side here is showing the left atrium, and underneath is the left ventricle, and right next to it is the right ventricle. Now for this video, I'm going to show from the perspective of lead 2 of what a normal sinus rhythm looks like. And to begin our journey on the heart's conduction system, it all begins with the SA node, as I'm highlighting as with the letters SA here. And the SA node sends electric signals to, to both right atrium and the left atrium simultaneously so that they can contract at the same time. And you can see through these green arrow lines here, the conduction pathway from the SA node to the AV node. And from the perspective of lead 2, this electric signal seems to be going towards lead 1 in the beginning, as highlighted by the dotted line here, the direction of lead 2. Then it's moving away, going away from lead 2 towards the AV node. So this shows up as a P wave, a trough going up towards lead 2 and going away from lead 2 towards AV node. That's your P wave signifying the atria contracting. Now in the blue circle, I'm showing the AV node and the electric signal from the AV node first travels down away from lead two. Then it travels up the right and the left ventricle. And specifically in the left ventricle, it's traveling towards lead two. So on the EKG strip, this shows up as a small line that is pointing down in negative then as the signal is traveling towards lead 2, up the ventricle, it shows up as a positive peak, and then as the signal gets weaker, it goes down back to baseline. And this blue line signifies the ventricular contraction or the QRS complex. And finally, we have the negative repolarization electric signals that travel from top to bottom so that the cardiac muscle cells are relaxed and can be depolarized again when it receives new electric signals. And that shows up as a negative signal traveling away from lead 2. So that will show up as a T wave, a positive peak on your EKG strip. And the P wave begins again, QRS complex shows up again, and the T wave follows again. And this pattern repeats over and over again. And this pattern is specifically called a normal sinus rhythm of a normal heart. Now I want to go back to our hypothetical scenario with the patient having the heart muscle spasm. And on the EKG strip, you actually saw this pattern. A completely irregularly irregular random peaks. Now let's compare this EKG strip to a normal sinus rhythm. So here's your P wave, QRS complex, and your T wave. Now, the patient EKG peaks look a lot like the QRS complex that's being highlighted in the green circle here, right? 
but it's irregularly irregular and completely random. So what is going on with this patient? Recall that QRS complex signifies ventricular contraction. So there is the patient's left ventricle, and turns out this patient's left ventricle is beating on its own really fast, completely independent of the atrial contraction. So there's no P wave, so there's no T wave, that means there's no atrial contraction or ventricular repolarization. But there is a lot of ventricular contraction as noted by the QRS complexes here, and it's basically showing a classic pattern of a heart arrhythmia called V-fib. And you might have heard V-fib in TV shows like Grey's Anatomy or House MD. It's a medical emergency and you need a defibrillator um, to get the heart back to its normal sinus rhythm. So now you know how to interpret EKG to diagnose a V-fib. That's pretty cool, huh? So that's basically it. Here's your normal heart, and to sum it all up, EKG machine allows you to visualize the movement and direction of the heart's electric signals. Your heart is beating usually 60 to 80 beats per minute, it's beating constantly. It's kind of like an electric circuit whose conduction system is made up of SA node, AV node, and all these electric pathways that allow the heart to contract regularly and keep you alive. If you enjoyed the content, please like, subscribe, and leave comments. Have a good day or have a good night. Bye-bye.